on January 17th, 2019. A manga artist unknowingly predicted the future. A couple of minutes ago, Japan. On the margin of just one millimeter, the over 100-year-old Spanish football team was defeated by Japan, a country which didn't even know what the World Cup was until the 1970s and only started playing because an elementary schooler in the 60s wanted that trophy. An 11-year-old so influential that he inspired some of the greatest football players to ever live and brought his country to the World Cup, all while being the son of a 19-year-old and not even being real. Eighteen years after the end of World War II and the emergence of early Japanese manga and animation, four-year-old Yoichi Takahashi had discovered a nail in the dirt while he was playing by the Arakawa River. After marveling at it, the boy realized that if he dragged the nail in particular ways, he'd be able to make lines and shapes. An interesting discovery, but an inconsequential one. Because Takahashi's interests were not in the arts, they were in baseball. After reading and watching baseball stories like Takanori's Kyuji no Hoshi, Takahashi was thoroughly determined to become a pro baseball player, just like most Japanese boys at the time, who aspired to be like their baseball idols, O oh and Nagashima. Takahashi was so enamored with the sport that he even made his own baseball team and competed with the other kids in his neighborhood. And when he wasn't out and about, he'd be sitting at home, reading and watching animes featuring his favorite sport. Inevitably, however, Takahashi started getting bored. Just sitting there and watching TV was too inactive for him. He needed to do something, so he grabbed a nearby pencil and started to copy the pictures he saw on screen, getting decent enough over the years that when his mom took his drawings to his elementary school's art contest, the fifth grade Takahashi would win first place. But what's better than winning? Money! So when Takahashi's younger brother told him that there was a big art contest where you could get money if you won, middle school Takahashi got really excited, running to the bookstore to get a how to draw manga book. After all, who's to say that he couldn't be a pro baseball player and a pro artist? Because of this, by the time Takahashi had entered high school, he had drawn a lot. But make no mistake, baseball still came first. And even though his art teacher said he thought Takahashi could go pro, Takahashi still wanted to be a star on the field. So he decided to join his high school baseball team, eager to make a name for himself. And that's when I gave up baseball. <laughs> yeah, high school baseball was rough. It was one time I was called in the sub for an injured player. I think it was second base. And I fumbled the ball so many times that they had to call in another guy to replace me minutes after I got on the field. I was so frustrated. It was such an opportunity, but I knew it was over. And Takahashi's situation was not going to get any better because he was now a junior, which meant that he had to decide whether or not he wanted to go to college when he was living in an economic system where top Japanese companies almost exclusively hired from colleges in a bid to guarantee labor stability in the uncertainty after the Second World War. Being that Shukatsu was the middle class dream in 1970s Japan, the decision would have been a no brainer for Takahashi if it wasn't for the fact that my his family, family was pretty modest. Sometimes we wouldn't even have enough food to pass around. So when it came time to decide about college, as the oldest of three brothers, I couldn't really ignore the finances. My mom said she'd work however many jobs to make it happen though, but my dad opposed it. I hated office work, I hated the thought of it. So I made the decision that I'd become a manga artist or I'd die. So while all of his friends and classmates began studying for their college entrance exams, Takahashi took up his pen and began his grind. Speaking of money, specifically saving money, here's our sponsor, Atlas VPN. If you're like me and my friends and want to go to Japan but are broke and a college student and want to get a cheeky discount on the flight prices there and back, then you'll love Atlas VPN, which can save you money on that equal to a free boba. On top of that, they also let you watch anything from anywhere and make sure that only you know your private info and not, like, this guy. Which is why Atlas is giving you three years of protection for just $170 a month, plus six months free and a money back guarantee if you click the link in the description. And 36 months of worry free existence plus an extra six months on the house is a pretty sweet deal. So go click the link and thank you for your support. The high schooler didn't win those big money awards. Not the Tezuka, and not the Rookie of the Year. The first one he backed out of, and the second one he just completely lost. Seeing this, Takahashi came up with a different plan. Instead of submitting his manga to competitions, he'd go straight to the publishing company and present his stories to them in person. If not success right then and there, money. at least he could get some in-person feedback about his stories. So with a whole summer break ahead of him, before senior year started, Takahashi drew non-stop. Coming up with two stories in the sweltering Tokyo heat. A sci-fi about a boy riding a dragon through space, and a western about just cowboys. Can't get much simpler than that. Now all we had to do was... Hello, this is the editorial department of Weekly Shonen Jump. Oh, uh, hi, my name's Takahashi. How may I help you? Uh, I, I want to become a mangaka, so I drew a manga and that I'd like to get looked at. Oh, so you want to bring it in? Uh, sure. Come to the office.
My name's Suzuki, so just ask for me. Sitting on the train, Takahashi's heart was racing, and by the time he'd sat down with Suzuki to review his stories, he could feel it coming out of his chest. I'll be honest with you, you wouldn't win anything with any of this. <sighs> At least he's honest with me. Why did you choose to draw sci-fi and western anyways? Well, I thought that, you know, since there are a lot of big stories in those genres, I, I might as well do it Well, too. I can tell you approach it that way because these are pretty bad. Oh, I, I see. Tell you what, why don't you draw something about a topic you're passionate about, then come back to me. Really? I can, I can do that? Yeah, something that excites you. What makes your gears turn? Um, what excites me? What's this? What's a World Cup? That stadium energy is crazy. I don't think I've ever seen a manga about this. After discovering the World Cup, Takahashi decided to try his hand at a soccer manga, handing it to Suzuki in November of 1978. Yeah, this is a good story. I'll submit it to a competition for you. I think it'll win an honorable mention. And it did exactly as Suzuki expected. <laughs> it won? Let's fucking go! Despite the fact that none of Takahashi's friends knew what he was on about, Takahashi continued working, straight through his senior year and past his graduation. Where, after a stint working at a factory, Suzuki would get Takahashi an assistant job to a Shinji Hiramatsu, a fellow manga artist who debuted at the age of 14, and who foresaw the making of a legend. Out of all of my assistants, he was the hardest working. There would be days where we'd stay the night at my place to finish a chapter, and while everyone else was knocked out, Takahashi was done with his portion and banging out his own manga. Fucking insane. And for good reason, because honorable mentions are great the first time around, they're not so great the fifth time around in a row. And so, dissatisfied and frustrated, Takahashi decided that he needed more time to himself and quit his assistant job, wandering out to find his true winning story, a story that would cause him hell. After a couple of months racking his brain, Takahashi would come up with a story that actually won something. His idea about a Japanese boy wanting to win the World Cup got the right to a spot in the magazine, even if no one in Japan actually knew what the World Cup was back then. His country's ignorance notwithstanding, Takahashi had one final condition to claim his prize. Draw three chapters of his stories and get it past the quarterly editorial board. Easy enough, the 19 year old thought. His winner would be chapter one, and he'd just draw two more chapters. Mission accomplished. <laughs> Life is not that simple. The first time round was pretty bad. The editor-in-chief just gave me a short letter that said it's not going to work and I was sent back to my room. And then his second try would fall flat as well. And at this point, some people in the company wanted to change the story to involve something more popular. They reasoned that Tsubasa wouldn't work because no one in Japan knew or cared about soccer. I, I didn't care what they had to say. But what Takahashi couldn't not care about was the time. He only had two tries before the year was over, and who knew if he had any more chances after that. Knowing this, Takahashi sat down and thought long and hard. And I remember that feeling. You know that feeling when you're a kid and you're just bedazzled by your idols and heroes and you just want to be them? That's what I wanted for my story. I saw myself in this little guy. Someone who wanted nothing more than to achieve anything. And while the editing board seemed to take Takahashi's third attempt well, since this was the attempt they actually let pass through, the Japanese public did not. To understand this issue, you have to understand how the manga industry runs. Unlike a movie, where the entire thing is complete before its release, which means if it gets bad reception, it's not just gonna end halfway through. Or even an anime, where you almost never see a show get dropped just midway through a season. Manga artists are continually fighting for their life, and fighting for their stories not to get cancelled. Because the next chapter isn't worked on until the previous chapter is published, usually. If the public's response to a story is bad, that story will get killed, whether it's ran for 10 years or only a few weeks and the arbiter of who lives and dies is this a tiny slip of paper called the reader's survey which surveys readers on what their favorite manga of the week's magazine are it's basically a popular rated contest after two rounds of collecting the data from these slips one called the quick report and the other one called Honchan. every manga is ranked from best to worst if your manga is in the bottom ranks i.e close to or in the double digits you're on the chopping block a few more times and you're told you're on the clock. And if you still can't reconcile the situation, your manga is finished. And Captain Tsubasa, well, wasn't faring well. With time ticking away, Takahashi scrambled, not just for his story, but for his life as a whole. So I made the decision that I'd become a manga artist or I'd die. Reading his fourth chapter that he was about to send off, Takahashi realized that it was good, but it wasn't great. With not much time left, he was faced with a choice. Pass this chapter off and improve on the next? Or I could redo the entire chapter. Come on 
now. Are you really surprised? It was an easy decision. Under a time crunch, Takashi now began redrawing his already finished fourth chapter. He wanted it to be more exciting, more thrilling, more impactful. And then he remembered something that gave him chills. They're not going to come from behind again, are they? Oh. It was that single kick, that single frame, that saved Takashi's life. Captain Tsubasa would not be cancelled, and the most influential 11 year old that never existed was born. Which would cause its own issues. Captain Tsubasa was a force of nature. It was so popular that it caused a huge increase in Japanese football school enrollments over the following years. And 10 years after Captain Tsubasa came out, the official Japanese league was created, later marking Japan's first successful qualifications into the FIFA World Cup. Everyone looked up to Tsubasa, the little guy inspiring not just to be legends in Japan, but to be legends around the world. But with everyone in Japan idolizing one player, they all wanted to be exactly like him, down to his exact position on the field. Number 10, attacking midfielder. For people who don't know football positions, which includes me, the attacking midfielder supports the offensive play and the attack when possible. Don't flame me, flame the website. But when everyone wants to be the guy supporting the forward, there's not going to be a forward to support because he doesn't exist. In fact, most of Japan's historic exported players were midfielders. This guy only changed the defense because the coach told him to. So with Japanese rankings way down here and a nation seemingly obsessed with supporting a player who just did not exist, one person decided that he had had enough. In the late 2010s, after going to college for manga, and then almost dropping out, and then giving up to becoming a median, and then giving that up and coming back to being a manga artist, but actually just being a manga writer because his editor told him his art sucked but his storytelling was good and he agreed so he became a part of a writer-artist duo, Muniyoki Kaneshiro had an idea. He was tired of the state of the Japanese league, where everyone wanted to just be a support. The Japanese fucking love cooperation harmony, which is so frustrating. There's no ego in our team, no one that wants to say fuck it and make the plays happen. How are we supposed to win without a big ball striker? With the corroboration of some other Japanese pro players, Kaneshiro, alongside artist partner Nomura, started creating a soccer manga purely about just that. Egos and strikers. So while Takahashi was getting recognized by FIFA, drawing for Japan's official Olympic bid, and Captain Tsubasa was helping topple Saddam Hussein, Kaneshiro wrote Blue Lock, a story about some kids locked up in the Pentagon, all competing to become Japan's best striker. And it was at the end of chapter 12, at the end of a game which decided our main character's fate, that they scored a miracle. With the ball mere feet away from the goalpost and millimeters away from the edge of the field. 